Hello, hello, wonderful people. It's Dr. Nikki, the board certified family nurse practitioner back in the house. Today, I will be talking about recommended health screenings and vaccinations. Recommended health screenings and vaccinations. This is in accordance with the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and their current guidelines. The ones that I will be talking about today are recommended for adults. All right, so we're going to focus on adults today. That does not mean that if you are a baby, you cannot get the flu vaccine. For example, you should be able to get the flu vaccine once you turn six months. But I'm going to focus on adults today. Okay. And as I said, this is um, in accordance with the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force and their current guidelines. Each person is different. So I would advise that you follow up or talk to your primary care provider about what your specific needs are. All right, so we're going to get started with hepatitis A vaccination and hepatitis B vaccination. I just wanted to let you know that hepatitis A is different from hepatitis B. All right, even though both of them affect the liver, hepatitis A can be caused by contaminated, um, can be spread through contaminated food and water, and you find the virus in feces of infected individuals. On the other hand, hepatitis B can be spread. The uh, virus can be spread through infected blood, semen, and bodily fluids. So we're going to go and talk about who needs it. So like for the hepatitis A vaccine, adults who want to be protected should consider getting the hepatitis A vaccination. We have two or three doses depending on the vaccine. And then for hepatitis B vaccination, we have adults as well who want to be protected. And of course, if you have any of the following, you should consider getting the vaccine as well so you should consider getting a hepatitis b vaccination if you have chronic liver disease if you have diabetes and you're age 60 and older all right and if you are um if you have dia- if you're undergoing hemodialysis and if you have kidney disease you should consider getting hepatitis b vaccination And for hepatitis B vaccination, we have three doses. They are not given together at the same time. They are spaced out. All right. So we're going to go over to the flu vaccination. Flu vaccination, all adults should get it. And as I said, younger children should get the flu vaccine. But I, I will be focusing on adults today. So all adults should get the flu vaccination and it's one dose every year. There are different variations of the flu vaccination. We have one, you know, some for seniors. We have one for adults. We have the flu mist. We have different types. So your healthcare provider will be able to tell you which one best suits your need. And depending on your age group, tell you the one that is recommended for you. For the pneumonia vaccine, we have two. We have one that is called Prevna 13 and we have one that is called Nemovax. Prevna 13 and Nemovax, they're both given to adults age 65 and older. And it's one dose each unless directed by your primary care provider. One dose each. The same thing, they're not given together the same day. They're spaced out about 12 months apart. So we have Prevna 13, pneumonia vaccine. We have Nemovax, pneumonia vaccine. Adults age 65 and older. I've seen some people that have immunocompromised um, conditions that do get the pneumonia vaccine even when they're younger than 65. All right. So as I said, each person is different. What works for me may not work for you. My specific needs may not be your specific needs. Okay? So always follow up and talk to your healthcare provider. All right. So we're going to go over to shingles vaccination. Shingles vaccination, the new one is called Shingrix. This is a revised one. It's a Shingrix. 
We did have Zostavax before, but Shingrix now comes in two doses and they're not given together again they are spaced out you get the first dose you go back two to six months later to get the second dose it's recommended for adults 50 and older to get the shingrix vaccine which prevents you from getting shingles which is herpes zoster all right and then we have tetanus diphtheria and the pertussis vaccination also known as tdap and then we have tetanus vaccine by itself called TD. So Tdap has, uh, it's a combination of three vaccinations, which is a tetanus, diphtheria, the pertussis, which is also known as the whooping cough. All adults should get that. It's one dose for T Tdap and then the TD booster is every 10 years. One dose for Tdap and the TD booster is every 10 years. I believe I am done with the vaccination part. I am going to go into the health screenings right now. So colon cancer is the first on the list. Colon cancer screening. We have different types of tests that could be done for colon cancer screening. The first one and the most popular one is colonoscopy. All right, so we have colonoscopy, we have sigmoidoscopy, we have the fit DNA, which is also known as a color guard, and then we have the fecal occult blood or FOBT. All right, colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, fit DNA, color guard, fecal occult blood, or FOBT. And as I said, you need to talk to your healthcare provider to see the best test that suits you based on your specific need. Adults, age 50 to 75 they're recommended to get the colon cancer screening adults ages 50 to 75 that doesn't mean that if you are over 75 you should just stop getting the colon um, colon cancer screening i have seen a lot of adults over the age of 75 even in the 80s continue to get their colon cancer screening because maybe they have a family history of colon cancer or their previous tests were abnormal. All right, so you talk to your healthcare provider if you've, have, if you've had any abnormal screening results to see when your next test would be. And that brings me to the schedule for colon cancer screening. So we do have, for colon cancer screening, we do have colonoscopy is every 10 years. Sigmoidoscopy is every five years, Cologuard fit DNA is every three years, and the fecal or cold blood FOBT is every year. As I said, this is not a strict schedule for everyone. Each person is different. This is just to let you know that these are the tests or the screenings that are recommended, and this is the recommended uh, guidelines but each person is different as I said I've seen people older than 75 continue to get colon cancer screenings and even mammal, um, breast cancer screenings as well and so for colonoscopy if you've had any abnormal tissue or cells or if you've had polyps or if you have a very close family member um, have colon cancer or family history of colon cancer, they may put you on a on another kind of schedule. You may have a three-year follow-up schedule. You may have a five-year follow-up schedule. And then, of course, if there's no polyp and you're well, you're on the 10-year schedule. All right? The same thing with sigmoidoscopy every five years, color guard every three years, and fecal or cold blood every year. Not everybody will qualify for some tests because if they need to check polyps they will probably not do a fecal or cold blood because a fecal or cold blood will only check for blood in your stool you will not be able to find polyps if that makes sense all right okay let us go over to breast cancer screening breast cancer screening we have mammogram is the breast cancer screening and women age 50 to 74 should consider getting a mammogram done every two years. And also women under 50, as needed, talk to your primary care provider. I have seen some women start mammogram in their 40s. 
all right and i've seen a lot of women continue mammogram even over the age of 74 and i've seen a lot of women con do mammogram every six months i've seen some people do every year and i've seen some people do every two years so each person is different all right so talk to your healthcare provider about your specific needs we're going to go over to bone density testing. So bone density or DEXA scan, it's osteoporosis screening. And women 65 and older should be getting that done. It's a one-time or as-needed basis. So if you've ever been diagnosed with osteoporosis, you may have to take some medication for some you know, years. Um, some people take Fosamax, Alendronate for about five years and stop the medication and then they may have a repeat bone density test to see if their bone density has improved. So each person is different, but as I said, you need to talk to your healthcare provider about the test that suits you for your specific need. All right, so we're going to go over to lung cancer screening so lung cancer screening we have low dose chest ct for lung cancer screening low dose chest ct adults age 55 to 80 who are current cigarette smokers or that have quit within the last 15 years they qualify to get a lung cancer screening, which is a low-dose CT ch um, chest CT, CT scan, low-dose chest CT. So if you've ever, if you're within that age range of 55 to 80 and you are currently a smoker, cigarette smoker, or you um, recently quit in the last 15 years, you should consider getting a low-dose CT chest done every year. Next up, we have aortic aneurysm screening. Aortic aneurysm screening is done by having an abdominal aortic ultrasound. And that is for men who are between 65 and 75 who have ever smoked. So if you're between 65 and 75 and you've ever smoked, you should consider getting an aortic um, abdominal aortic ultrasound for aortic aneurysm screening. All right, aortic, uh, aortic aneurysm screening, which will involve you getting an ultrasound, and it's a one-time screening. All right, moving on, we're going to talk about cervical cancer screening. Cervical cancer screening, the test is a pap smear. The test is a pap smear. Women who are between 21 and 65 should be getting a pap smear. And it's every three years. And then women who are 30 to 65 should be getting an HPV test included. And that will be every five years. So let me repeat that. If you get a pap smear by itself without HPV, it's every three years. And then if you get the HPV testing along with your pap, then it's every five years. Always remember, as I said before, the, the schedule may vary for different people. So if they if they found your pap smear to be abnormal, they may require you to do further testing and um, you know biopsies, you know colposcopy, things of that nature, and that may change your routine. You know that may change your schedule. You may be required to come back every you know, year for pap smear or every few months for pap smear till they figure out what's going on. So each person is different. You need to you talk to your healthcare provider about your specific need. All right. So as I said, pap smear every three years, if they have the HPV test every five years, and then we do have hepatitis C screening. Hepatitis C screening is for adults born between 1945 and 1965 between 1945 and 1965 or well, anyone who it has risk should get hepatitis c screening all right and it's a one-time screening you talk to your healthcare provider about that 
Next up, we have cholesterol screening. So cholesterol screening is recommended for adults and uh, definitely anyone with diabetes should be getting cholesterol screening. It should actually be part of your annual physical. If you do go for annual physical, it should be part of your annual physical. Definitely for people that have diabetes. So every five years, if you're not taking any cholesterol medication, all right? And then we have eye examination to detect any type of diabetes related issues like diabetic retinopathy. Anyone with diabetes should go for eye examination and it should be every year. Every year for eye exam, especially if you're diabetic. All right. And if you're not diabetic, you should have vision screenings done. Vision screenings, adults age 65 and older that does not mean that if you're less than 65 you should not go for vision screenings you should go for vision screenings because if you have any kind of uh, visual problems like vision problems uh, if you're using glasses if you're using contacts if you've had a, uh, astigmatism if you've had any kind of problems with your eyes you know if you've had glaucoma glaucoma anything of that nature macular degeneration then you don't have to wait till you're 65 to go and get your eye examined you should follow up with your healthcare provider or specialist and you should go on their own um schedule all right recommended schedule that is given to you so as i said specific you know different people have their specific issues specific health problems and they have to follow their their own schedule and what suits them all right so yeah so we talked about eye examination and then we talked about vision screening so every one to two years if you don't have any problems at all with your eyes you should be getting that done every one to two years but as i said some people have a lot of issues with their eyes and they are on a separate schedule and this is just pretty much some current guidelines for if I may say healthy adults, but there are variations here and there if you've had problems going on. But these are like just the general current guidelines for healthy adults to follow. All right. So as I said, I hope this helps and I hope that you do take charge of your health. Because health is wealth and we're in a new year. And I hope that you find this very helpful and you can share this with your friends and family and um yeah we live better lives in this year and new decade thank you very much and i hope to catch you in the next one take care bye bye